Perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm in, Sharon. I'll let you go. Okay. Okay. Bye. Don't forget to mute. I did. I think I did. It doesn't show up on. There we go. Uh, somebody must have joined after I muted everybody. Okay. Good morning. So nice to see all of you. Very exciting. Um, have quite a few things to go over from my end just to start the meeting. I hope you're all doing well. Um, because of all we discussed these days is Zoom, Zoom, and more Zoom, I have an update on Zoom for you, which is that we finally decided it was time to purchase a Zoom account for the Guild. We've been using my personal account, we're still using that today, but we are going to shift over to a Guild account. Um, this means that all the things that we do from now on will be done through the Guild account. It means if you would like to host a virtual so day for us, you do not have to have a paid Guild or a paid Zoom account of your own. You can use the Guild account to host, so we hope that a lot of you will be willing to host. You don't have to make food, you don't have to clean your house. <laughs> you basically just have to start the meeting. So if you would like to host a virtual so day, please email Deborah because she's the one who's coordinating all of that. But we'll, we'll be using this for, we have a couple of special events coming up, more planned down the road. Um, so we'll be using the Guild account for all of that. So just, you know, keep an eye on your inbox for all that information. Um, and as Deborah said right before we started, if you have questions about anything that comes up as we go along, please put it in the chat. I can't monitor that while we're doing the meeting. It's just one too many things for my head to absorb. So Deborah's going to try to monitor that. And we'll either ask, answer your questions when we get to Deborah, or we'll have a little moment at the end to try to answer any questions that came up. So just put them in the chat while you're thinking about them, and we'll address it later. Um, the Maitland Library. They're going month by month about the so day there. Obviously, I got another notice from them this month that they are not um, having any in-person meetings for the month of August. So we'll just see as we go forward. Um, the quarantine diary in the newsletter, have you been reading that? I hope you've been reading that. I've been loving that. It's been so great to see what all of you are working on, even though we're not still in quarantine, but please keep sending those to love. Um, it's just, it, it makes, it's a nice way to feel connected to what all of you are doing in this time. And of course, I'm still collecting sewing room tours. We have three today to show. I'm very excited about that. Um, so keep sending those in. Um, I hope you also saw in the newsletter that we made the official decision to cancel the retreat. And I am sorry about that, but there's just, it's just too unpredictable right now. We always want to have a good turnout for that. And the last thing we want to do is, um, endanger the health or the safety of any of our members. So we're just not going to have an in-person retreat this year. However, Renee and I attended a webinar that the Silicon Valley Modern Quilt Guild gave about their virtual retreat, which this is especially impressive considering that they, their retreat was scheduled for Memorial Day weekend. So they canceled it one month out when things started to get really bad and they planned a virtual retreat in three weeks. And it, it, they had a lot of really fun ideas. Of course, it's all done virtually over Zoom. Um, they shared a wealth of information. They shared their, the slides, their spreadsheets, everything that they did. They did some virtual scavenger hunts. They had a list of um, different projects that you had to complete during the retreat. And then you got points for that. And then they gave prizes at the end for who had the most points. It was just a lot of fun. And they basically had three or four days even where they kind of kept the Zoom meeting open all day. And people came and sewed together and then they went away and they might have had a little group activity at some point or they had a little class or they had a little, you know, instructional thing and just kept this going for three or four days. So this is definitely something that we could look at doing and we could try to do it the same weekend in November that we already had it scheduled. The kicker is that we need help. I cannot take this on right now, Renee can't take it on, but we can certainly do it as a committee. So if there are a few of you that'd be willing to help out with this, don't worry about the technical side of it, we'll figure that out. But if you could help us with the planning and the publicizing and the collecting of prizes and, and you know that kind of thing, it would be wonderful. So please email me directly if you would like to help out or email the Guild email. You can always email the Guild and email about everything. Um, Betty Baker had a great question earlier this week, which is, is the sewing studio still honoring our discount even though we're not meeting there in person anymore? And Aradria checked with them, and yes, the answer is yes. As long as you have your little Orlando MQG membership card that you got when you renewed your membership, 
Um, Paula, I don't see Paula on my screen right now, but I think if you've lost it or something, not, is it Paula that said, no, it would be Kathy Aber. Um, if you've lost it, get in touch with Kathy Aber and she can send you a replacement if, if you can't find yours. And then last but not least, there's a really interesting thing that has been um, set up right now. It's called the Global Quilt Connection. And this is what Deborah was talking about earlier when she said, check out my background. It, this is something that has been put together and I think it's something like 90 quilt teachers over three separate meetings are talking about what they have available for virtual instruction, since that's what everybody's had to go to. So Renee, Marge, uh, and I are signed up for those. And of course, Deborah is presenting at one today. Um, and any of you who want to go and do that, you can just Google Global Quilt Connection. Um, the email I got came from Sue Blywise, but there's a few people. There's also a Facebook connection for that. You can hey, sign. Can I add to that, Edie? Yeah, please do. So they're only they're actually they're asking for program uh, coordinators to attend, not for general guild members, because they have a cutoff based on the amount of uh, Zoom people that can attend. Oh, are they? Because I interpreted it that it was just that you, anybody could join until the meeting was full. Okay, so never mind. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. But we both answers are correct. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, Renee and Marge and I are, and Deborah are going to be monitoring that, and hopefully we can come up with some good information about teachers. I mean, everybody has some kind of virtual instruction out there now, and um, we have kind of felt as a guild that based on the results of the survey and some of the other discussions that we've had that trying to offer, trying to offer as a guild, a six hour class is not something that most of our guild members are currently interested in. But we do have some lineups for some trunk shows and some lectures that would be maybe an hour, an hour and a half long. And we feel like that's something that's more workable for us. But if you're looking for online classes, there's a million of them out there. Um, okay. So the next thing is we have some sewing room videos. Now, bear with me because you know this is the part of the meeting that I find the <laughs> most nerve wracking. But theoretically, I'm going to show, I think Dawn's is first. Start with Dawn's. This is my sewing room. Here's my design wall and ironing board, my some storage and my tables with my sewing machine, cutting and cutting area. All those bags under there are all projects in progress. This table over here, my husband repurposed from a platform bed, as well as the storage uh, cabinets. This is where I keep all my scraps. So I have all my scraps organized. I also have all my rulers hanging on hooks and some other projects in, in the progress in the bottom there. And then my fabric is stored in this closet and I've got them organized by size, headquarters and yards, and then also category some Patriotic and Christmas, and then my books, my knitting supplies, and then more fabric and yardage, a lot of it donated, um, and, and some 10 inch squares. Okay, that was Dawn's. I love how everybody has little piles of <laughs> unfinished projects everywhere. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> All right, let me get out of this and then we go to the next one is going to be Ashley's. Hi everyone, it's Ashley. Uh, today you get to tour my sewing space, aka work from home environment. Um, this, when we moved here about a year ago, this area, um, this extra bedroom was supposed to be like full sewing space and a little bit of space, just casual office. And since March, my husband and I have both been working here. So here's his work area and pan back. You can see my collection of books and 
lots of fabric for maybe one day projects. And here's where I work. Um, a few times I've put my sewing machine here and it's nice to be able to look up instructions or anything on my monitor. So maybe a more permanent setup if I ever go back to a real office. So I'll walk you down the hall where I actually, when I do have the time, usually late at night after Violet's asleep, I'll sew some. I have a few projects going on always. Um, so this is actually our dining space. Um, you can see my sewing machines off to the side. <laughs> we kind of like always keep this, these like three seats pretty clear and then I'll, you know, move everything out of the way so we can eat. Um, have my ironing board set up. And always a few different projects. You can see a pile of masks in the works and I'm doing an Elizabeth Hartman uh, medallion. So a few layers of that done. Um, so this is the space. I was so excited to not be working in like our dining space anymore and then just had to work from home. So, but conveniently we have our bar right next to my dining <laughs> space. That's always fun. Um, one other thing, just wanted to share, Violet's been really into playing with baby dolls lately and she laid all of her quilts out this morning on the floor and covered up her baby so they can take a nap. So thought I would share that. You can see the, the one that the several guild members made last year. So anyways, that's it. Thank you, Ashley. And let me just see if I can find my last one, which is Diana. Now let's see, where did that go? Let's see if I can get out of this one. Give me a second here. Nope. This is my sewing room. Oh, there's Diana. Hi everybody, it's Diana and I'm gonna show you my sewing room. Come on in. So this is one of our spare bedrooms and we've converted it into my sewing quarters. So you can see that I've got my um, long arm here. I am a long armor. Um, I have all of my long arm thread on this wall here and as well as my extras in that small filing cabinet. Behind it, I've got my design wall. Um, so you can see that's one of the projects I am working on. Um, on this other wall here, I have my rulers, all of my rulers here. Um, most of these are my cutting rulers. Uh, the rulers over there are my long arm rulers. Um, and then, um, and just so you know, this is Peggy, by the way, her name is Peggy. And over here is my quilting machine as far as my piecing machine, and that is Pearl. It is a baby lock. Um, so I use that for all of my piecing. Above it is my, some of my cutting stations as well as thread for my piecing. And then in here, you'll notice that this is a Jack and Jill um, style of bedroom. So I have half of a bath here um, that connects into our other room. Um, when we don't have guests in the bathroom is where I keep my um, actual batting. I have a roll of batting that I usually keep there out of the way. Um, on either side of my sink here, I, I have two different cutting mats. I've got just a standard one, which is a dark. I can flip it over if I need to. Um, as well as my Quilt Cut 2, which is a cutting system that allows me to do lots of strips very quickly. Um, it's a great system. And then inside uh, my closet here, inside the closet is where I actually keep all of my fabric. So I have all of my, um, I also have all of my um, tops, piece of tops that are waiting to be quilted, along with my scraps that are in clear bins, and then all of my pre-cuts, including my fat quarters, my um, charm packs, as well as layer cakes and jelly rolls. And then at the bottom is all of my yardage. So that's my sewing room. And thank you, Diana. That is impressive how we've all moved into every room in the house. <laughs> you just make it work whatever way you can. I think that's great. Okay, um, on to Deborah. Hey everyone, um, Edie, just shake your head that you can hear me. I can. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, 
So just going to start with, welcome everybody, if we haven't said that yet. Um, it, it really is fun to see everyone and to give advice to everyone and receive advice and see what you're working on. Um, I see Michelle there working on something, but I can't see it, what it is. Maybe she'll hold it up for us while I'm talking. Um, so thanks, Michelle. <laughs> so uh, it's a wrap is still going on. Um, September is the next month that we'll have a number. Please make sure that you use the hashtag and especially send pictures to Debbie for the meeting. We're gonna show some more in September, um, your progress in September, and also um, at a future show and tell. Um, also, we have several virtual show days set up for August. They were listed in the newsletter, so I'm not going to list them here. Aradria is going to post them on our social media as they're upcoming. You'll get some emails. So you don't have to sign up for them. We're going to send the email to everybody. So, um, and in those emails, you'll have all that you need to sign up or to attend rather. If you'd like to host a virtual so day, as Edie said earlier, we have now a Guild Zoom account. So if you'd like to host a so day that's more convenient to your time frame uh, based on what you do in life and just shoot me an email or Edie and we'll schedule the time that you desire. Maybe you're someone that likes to start sewing at 11 p.m. at night. Um, you can actually host a Zoom at that time. So we'll figure that out for you if you're an evening sewer. Um, uh, Christmas in July, the scrap exchange all the emails went out a couple weeks ago, and if you're not by now paired with someone, if I fall in short and not uh, emailed you, or if you haven't heard from your partner, please get in touch with me this weekend. Um, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. I have a list of everybody who's matched up with everybody. I know that I got one email wrong, address wrong, and I had to resend that. So if you've signed up, make sure you're already in touch with your partner. And um, if not, really send me an email. All right, so the big news is last month we had a really fun event with the long arm panel and it went so great that we thought we'd do something similar. Um, one of the things, I don't know about you, but I love the show and tell video at the end where we get to see everyone's um, progress. But one thing I miss is everyone talking about that project and, and the question and answer part of that. It's like, hey, I made this quilt. And somebody, if somebody wants to say, well, what pattern is that? Or that we just have questions and we want some interaction. So to have some interaction, sorry, it's not going to happen at the end of this meeting, but <laughs> on August 26th, we're going to have a meeting, and I don't have the time in front of me. I think it was 6 or 7 p.m. What time was it, Edie? 6 or 7, 7. I think I read her lips that said 7. And um, August 26th, we're going to have we're gonna have a show and tell night. That's all we're going to do is show and tell. We can show our quilts or a project that you're working on. It doesn't have to be completed. It can be from anything that you want to show or talk about. Um, it's just a whole night of show and tell conversation. It's gonna be really, really fun. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's all that I have. Yeah, and I mean, we just, this is, we vision, envision this as being anything. If you've got a cute pattern that you're excited about, but you haven't made it yet, you found some great fabric you want to show off, whatever it is, bring it all. So that'd be August 26, 7 p.m. And we'll probably go for about an hour and a half, because I think that's about all the time people have to sit at the computer. Um, again, no need to sign up for that. However, I did say in the newsletter, if you have something you want to show, <clears throat> you would email me or email the guild just so that we kind of have some semblance of order instead of everybody trying to talk over each other. And that way I can kind of just make a list of people and we can go through it. So if you can do that, that'd be great. We'll send a reminder about that as well. Okay, the next thing is our education update. Marge could not be with us today, so I'm kind of covering that for her. So I'm hoping that you have all seen um, all the notifications about the Social Justice Sewing Academy. Uh, we're hosting Sarah Trail from the Social Justice Sewing Academy next week on Thursday night, the 13th at 7 p.m. 
Um, I just want to clarify as a member, you do not need to do anything to sign up. You're going to get the Zoom code the day before. If you want to make a donation to SJSA, because all the proceeds from what comes in will go to them as a donation, you can go to the pay our PayPal account, which is on the blog, and you can make a donation that way. But you do not need to sign up. You'll get the, the code. Um, I hope you're as excited about this presentation as I am. She is, she is a very young woman. I think she's 25. She is more articulate at 25 than I have ever been at any stage in my life, definitely including now. Um, she has a real passion for what she does. If you have been at QuiltCon and seen their exhibit the last, I think they've been there at least the last two times I've been there. I don't know how many times they've been there total. It is always one of the most stunning and thought-provoking areas of the quilt show. And I have a real heart for this because not only is she giving children and young adults a way of expressing themselves through art, in this case sewing, it's also a means of framing their questions and their anxieties about the world and it's bringing them to sewing as a means of personal personal expression. And you know we always hear these things about how sewing is kind of a dying art and you know we're all a bunch of old ladies who do this. That is so not the case. And she's you know she's helping to really foster this for a new generation. So um, if you could really help us out, those of you who are on social media, if you, you, we all have different followers, if you could repost that information and Aradria will be sending it again after this meeting, it would be great if everybody could repost it on their personal page so that your followers could see it. Um, we are asking people who are not members of the guild to make a minimal donation. It's a $5 minimum. We suggest 10 and that way, that's how they get the Zoom code. And again, all the proceeds go to SJSA. Aradria, did you have anything you, because Aradria, um, Portland MQG had hosted Sarah before and Aradria attended that presentation. So did you have anything you wanted to add? Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Still muted. Still can't hear you. Let's see. I got it. Sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mom brain. Um, sorry. No, I think you covered it really well, Edie. It would be everything that I wanted to say. She's an incredible speaker. Um, I find her very moving and it, after hearing her speak, you want to participate and help in, in the efforts. And they've started several new initiatives recently um, for quilters to help um, that she'll probably be going over next week. And um, I, no, I don't have any, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I appreciate that. That's, that's good. That's good. Um, I, I should have mentioned too, if you remember when we did the 70273 project, do you raise your hand if you remember that with Jean Huell Chambers? A lot of us helped out with those. She did the, the banners um, and this is the same kind of thing. It would be something that you'd participate in individually. There's a number of things, um, projects that they ask you to finish for the, for the children who have, or young adults who have an idea of how they want their project to be finished, but they don't necessarily have the sewing skills to do it. So I'm sure she'll talk about all of those things, but there are a number of ways in which we can participate beyond donation. Um, so I, it's going to be a really exciting night and I hope you'll join us. And I'm hoping if you have any questions about it, you're putting it in the chat. And she's, we can... um, looking for embroiderers and yeah. she's, um, people that have been killed, uh, through police violence. Um, they're commemorating their lives and they're asking quilters. They give a person, a name of a person that has passed away and for you to create a block to commemorate their life and then they're going to make these into it almost looks like a runner but it like it's like a runner but there'll be banners that can be held up um for protests for um different exhibits um for black lives matter and uh i just i i think it's a wonderful thing they're doing right now that and it's lovely life. that they're um memorializing these people and you know, it's nice as a craft, as a sewist crafter that we can help and participate and lend our voice to that. And so I'm excited and that was, about it. <laughs> that's what reminded me of the, um, 
70273 was the banners because that's how yeah. uh, Dean put a lot of those things together to exhibit them. So anyway, if you have questions about that, ask um, in the chat and I'm looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible next Thursday. Yes. Keep an eye out for the, for the uh, code. Um, so Renee's class, those of you, we had a great uh, response to Renee's class for the Laura Heine collage. Uh, um, you should have, most of you should have received your supplies. Thank you to Love and to Paula and to Marge who helped me distribute those. We had porch drop-offs and then some of yours went in the mail. If you haven't gotten your supplies, I would say by Friday of this week, um, please let Renee know right away. I mean, it may just be that there's something, the mail's been a little slow, so maybe, you know, they might be, but if you have, um, if you were on one of my lists to have something dropped off to you, you just need to make sure that Renee knows you haven't gotten your supplies and we'll figure it out. Um, also, she did send out the first video, which is the only recorded video. They're all going to be recorded after the fact, but this is the one that is not going to be live. If you didn't receive that and you signed up for Renee's class, please contact her immediately as well. And then um, one last thing, uh, something else to put on your calendar, Amy Friend, who was supposed to come and be a live instructor for us, obviously that's not going to happen. She was supposed to be here at the end of this month. She is going to be doing a trunk show and a lecture for us on October 17th. We'll have more information about this coming up. But I would just like to say that again, this is something that the Guild is presenting to our members. There's not going to be any cost to you involved in this. Uh, we're trying to do as many things as we can to keep you active and engaged. And so this is our this is another little gift for you. The SJSA lecture is a gift. Our, our quilt kits for the collage cl cat, uh, class are a gift from the Guild. Just want to keep you happy and engaged. So I hope you'll look forward to that as well. She is a fantastic paper piecer, among other things. So it should be really interesting. And I love to see her quilts. Um, okay, next thing is the library. Aradria, do you have a couple little things you want to show for us? Unmuted myself. Um, I feel bad because I keep going over curated quilts, but they're the newest thing in to, to the library. It's really great because they're $18 an issue, so that way you don't have to pay that price. The, the guild is paying that and you get to uh, enjoy the magazine. It's almost like a book. Um, it's very, the way they're published, uh, the quality paper and everything, it's really nice from that end, from a design end. Uh, the first issue was the applique issue and Miss Deborah, our VP, is featured in there. <laughs> but they also, I like that they, it's, modern quilting curated quilts, but they also go over in each issue so far, it's been applique and the latest issue, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, they also go over some of the history of, of that particular subject. So it's nice, I, I like history. <laughs> and so it's nice to learn about the craft and what's behind it. I, um, let me see, I bookmarked a couple like they have this one, little known facts, 1900s applique kits set new standards and propel the economy. So there's a, this whole article on that. There's always uh, new pill up patterns and a lot of the top uh, people that are leaders in the modern quilt world, you know, that are well known, there's different quilts from them. There was a great article called, uh, Hidden in the applique, unseen messages in historic and contemporary applique quilts. So that's interesting. And then there was, um, there's a ton in these issues, but um, they also do a pattern for each month. And for the applique, they did a great one um, in there that a free pattern for the applique, but I'll get over to the half square triangles. So in this issue, they're Discover Whimsy Wood Quilts by Laura Petrovich Cheney. Learn why you need to copy an antique quilt like an old master. Uh, use your stash in a creative reset. So that one was a lot of fun because I'm still in my prints phase, I would say. <laughs> I love a print. But um, it was the articles about using up your print stash and mixing it with solids. And so that was really interesting. She showed sewing my quilt stash off. 
So she's trying to go through her print stash. And then let's see. <clears throat> Sorry, I hope I, I hope I'm not boring you all. <laughs> Edie wanted me to do a presentation. Sorry. <laughs> and then there's a great one for a half square triangle quilts. And they also showed it, it's a free pattern in there. They showed it in solids and then like using uh, four colors if you count the whites, mm -hmm. a version of that. So they're just, it's a really great magazine. They have reviews that will show some of the new lines coming out. And then another nice thing about it is each quarterly issue, um, they have a theme and you could submit your quilts to it and have your quilt featured in, in the magazine as well. So that's kind of a neat bonus. So anyhow. Arabia, can, you, can, you talk about how, can you talk about how the library's working? How are you, how are you doing Yes, that? sorry. I am slacking on that end and I apologize to everyone. I haven't, um, I've been busy with helping with the SGA SA event, so I haven't had a chance to um, enter the current library list on the blog and I just want to apologize to anyone if you, we have way more books than what's up there. Um, we, it's like three of those lists that we have actually. So anyhow, um, I'll get that updated, but if you have a question about any books, if we have that title, just shoot me a text or email, Messenger, Instagram, any of those, I'll reply, <laughs> so. And are you setting up, if people want to come by and get a book, do they just contact yeah. you? I have like, I usually have a car, a, like a folding card table in our carport because we've been getting deliveries, grocery deliveries that way. And so if there, if you want to return a title, just let me know you're returning it because you know, Florida, our weather is unpredictable and I don't want the books to get ruined. So just let me know you're dropping it off or put it in some, in a bag to protect it. But yeah, you can pick up, drop off. Uh, my address is in the directory and just, like I said, just let me know that you're going to be returning something or if you need to request a title. It's just like at a library day, but we're remote revising. <laughs> so. Thank you, Aradria. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, okay, so on to programming. Deborah. <clears throat> hey, good morning again, everybody. So I just want to introduce to you Ashley Gostart. Um, she's going to be our program presenter today, continuing with our somewhat theme on uh, Japanese quilting. So Ashley is actually an award-winning quilter. She does have a ribbon to her name. Um, she's an architect, a fairly new mom, and um, she went to Japan for her honeymoon. So that qualifies her to teach this class in our book. Um, she's such a busy, busy lady, and she's always putting out some really sweet work. So I'm just so glad that she's part of our guild and um, had the opportunity to get to know her a little more these last few months. Um, after this program, give her a shout out, send her an email, send her a text and say, hey, thanks and ask her any questions you want about her program today. Um, here's Ashley. Thanks, Deborah. Um, part of that award-winning quilt was really your fabulous quilting. So um, it got high marks from the judge. So um, like uh, Deborah said, um, my honeymoon was in Japan. I've always had interest in Japanese art and culture, architecture, and it was wonderful to be able to see all that beauty firsthand. Um, so let me share. Okay. Um, So today I wanted to talk about wabi-sabi, boro, and kintsugi. Uh, these are Japanese ways of embracing the imperfect. Wabi-sabi um, expresses the part of simplicity, impermanence, flaws, and imperfection. It's an attitude of seeking beauty and inner contentment and simplicity and imperfection. Um, this is thought to have developed in 1300 to 1500 um, during that era. Um, it's a quality of emotion or mental state and expresses extreme simplicity and in just enjoying a very simple life. Um, you can see here the photo um, is a 
garden outside of, you know, my background photo is um, from a inn that we stayed in. And this is outside of our room, um, this really simple little garden, moss covered rocks. Um, so the sabi part of Bobby Sabi, it's the effect of time, the effect that time has on uh, substances or objects. Um, there's an attitude um, of seeking beauty um, in things that are weathered, um, like these moss covered stones. Um, a physical state of wear that comes from time and outer beauty, which um, ages and gradually gets, you know, changes the objects. Together, um, the Wabi and Sabi embraces the idea and appreciates those aging flaws and the beauty of that, the imperfection. Um, the two parts complete each other. They express simplicity and the truest form of, of an object. Wabi Sabi has a deep and rooted effect and influence on the culture of Japan. The philosophy reflects in many local aspects, such as the gardens, architecture, and many other forms of art. It is viewed or thought of finding beauty in every aspect or of imperfections in nature. It's an aesthetic of things in existence. It's that um, beauty, again, of the imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. Simply put, nothing lasts, lasts, nothing is finished, nothing is perfect. Um, you can see here, this is a walkway around um, a site that we visited, um, varying materials, them aging over time, making repairs, and appreciating weathered wood, paint peeling, the beauty and you know the discolorations of the wood, letting it age over time and having its like natural wear patterns. Boro um, is something tattered or repaired and a practice of reworking and repairing textiles through piecing, patching, and stitching in order to extend their use. Um, in our September meeting, I plan to talk more about Japanese um, the history of cotton and patterns in the Japanese textiles. This will be a little abbreviated about Boro, but um, cotton grew well in the southern part of Japan, so it was very rare and, and expensive in northern parts of Japan. Um, so because of this, scraps and tattered garments and bedding were traded for other goods. And then those mended pieces um, were given a second life through this technique, kind of a patchwork. And actually the layering of the fabrics with the stitching made them much more durable and warmer for the northern climate. Um, the visible mending is traced back to the Edo era, the 1600s to 1800s. And it's a form of sashiko, which um, the guild had a, a um, class on not too long ago. Um, sashiko translates literally to little stabs. And it's those running stitches that you see that are prominent on the fabric. And sometimes they're very clear patterns, or they can be more organic stitches and just are more functional instead of having an aesthetic. Um, this type of clothing was common for working people, um, and it held together those indigo dyed and linen fabrics. Um, and this is very common, you know, for the working class when clothing was very costly and um, hard to come by. The visible mending, again, uses the big stitches in an organic way, or the clear patterns are used as ornamentation. And this makes the fabric stronger and warmer, very similar to how we quilt, you know, layering the fabrics together. Um, giving these tattered fabrics another life enhances their beauty and function. Again, similar to the appreciation of Wabi Sabi. Kintsugi um, literally is golden joinery. It's a centuries old art of fixing broken pottery. Rather than rejoin ceramic pieces with camouflage adhesive, the kintsugi technique employs a special tree sap lacquer dusted with powdered gold, silver, or platinum. Um, once completed, the beautiful seams of gold glint in the conspicuous cracks of ceramic wares, giving the pieces a one-of-a-kind of of kind appearance to each repaired piece. 
Um, often these gaps can even be filled in with other pieces of ceramic um, that maybe doesn't match. Um, maybe the pieces were lost or damaged. Um, this unique method celebrates celebrates each artifact's unique history and it emphasizes the fractures and breaks instead of trying to hide or disguise them. Um, Kintsugi often makes the repaired piece even more beautiful than the original, revitalizing it with a new look and giving it a second life. Uh, Kintsugi has long represented a deep philosophical ideas within the Japanese culture. Um, it's very related to wabi-sabi, um, seeing the beauty in, the, in flawed or imperfect pieces. The repaired method was born from the Japanese feeling of motenai, which expresses regret when something is wasted, literally means what a waste. Um, and the idea of accepting change. So over time, pieces um, can be worn, but still function and are still beautiful. Um, there's even reports of people intentionally breaking pieces in order to repair them in this way because it's thought to be so beautiful. And um, the history of the object is recognized and the repair, rather than being disguised, becomes a focal point. Um, I feel like we all have those items in our house where we treasure, they're so beautiful, you don't want to use the china or the silverware and you, you hide them away. But in Japanese culture, everything is meant to be used and it's beautiful. You don't have pieces in your house that you don't use. Um, I actually, funny story, we were in an antique store and I was buying a little teapot for my mom in Japan and I just, it's beautiful. My mom has a collection of um, different Chinese and Japanese teapots and the shop owner asked what I plan to do with it and he told me how the reason it was so tiny was because the very fine teas that they would drink, the more expensive ones, they would only make, could only afford to make um, small amounts of it. So they had the tiny teapots and the tiny cups. And I said, oh, I, you know, we'll display it. And he was surprised by that. Like, why wouldn't you use it? You know, yeah, you can display something in your house, but also you should be using it. Um, so it struck me and made me want to use the things in my house more. Um, so again, there's this, this irony of like our most beloved pieces, we like tuck away. So why not use them? And even if they do get damaged, there can still be beauty in that. Um, the kintsugi is much more than a repair method. It is an art in itself. And here you can see, um, like I was saying, some pieces um, are even replaced with like different, you know, this looks like a piece of glass or other types of pottery that wasn't originally part of the piece. And it is beautiful. It makes me think of patchwork and ways that we um, piece together our items and make different patterns. Um, this book, Inspiring Improv, it's by Nicholas Ball, and he has a quilt in there called Kintsugi, and he um, took inspiration from the ancient art form and embracing any kind of mistakes in his process. He talks about how he's um, changing his mindset and how he works with improv. Um, the whole book is about uh, various quilts of the same technique and it's an opportunity to develop um, different beautiful pieces of art. Um, he embraces those mistakes and revitalizes them and wants to kind of record their history um, and make the item better because of it. Um, you can see how he applied both of these ideas of mending with gold and inserting different fabrics as if those pieces were lost in the break. So you can see, you know, in here these gold pieces among the field of, of beige and the brown and the field of yellow. So um, this is a fascinating book for me. I was very inspired just by seeing the cover and then to find this quilt within it. Um, I think it would be uh, something on my list, on my to-do list, but um, I think I found great inspiration in embracing these philosophies as a way to quilt, especially trying to get more involved in improv, um, taking piece, you know, scrap pieces that I have and just making them work. Um, I actually, even during one of our um, previous year's programs, our improv group, um, I, one of my prompts was all of these principles of wabi-sabi and kintsugi 
and it was fascinating to see the, the results of that. Um, so I hope you all are um, inspired by this to apply some of these philosophies to your art and maybe um, pick up this book if you have a chance or maybe we can add it to the library. Um, but are you done? Well, that was gorgeous, Ashley. That's just stunning. Thanks. The, um, so the, I had a question about those gorgeous jackets with, that had so much stitching on them. Did that start out just to be purely functional and then it became decorative? Or was that just something that they did from the beginning for warmth and for making it secure? It was meant to be purely functional. Um, and I think just embracing the embracing that need of it to be functional, um, having the quick stitches and um, made it, I don't know how to say, like it truly is just functional. <laughs> I don't know what to, how to elaborate further on that. I plan to talk a little bit more about the okay. boro and um, okay. cotton um, in the future. Okay, thank you so much. That was just fantastic. Thanks. So now we are going to go on to, let's see what we have left here. Oh, we'll do our virtual show and tell. Let me just find my little screen here. Nope. No, I don't want to share that one. Hang on. Just give me a second. Sorry, guys. I don't know why I haven't had this queued up. Paula, do you have this ready on yours by any chance? I don't know why it won't let me get out of this. Paula, are you on? Hello? Yes, she is. Okay, hang on, give her a second here. One second, technical difficulties. She might have stepped away from hers for just a second. Hey, I'm just going to step in while um, Dee One and second. Paula are working on it just so that there's not silence and so that they don't feel rushed. So thanks for taking your time to get our program and our virtual show just right, Edie. So does anybody have any general questions that they want to ask um, about what's coming up? or if they want to type it into the um, messages, you can do that. I see that someone asked about the um, curated quilts and Aradri, I think we have two issues so far, correct? Yeah, so we have two issues in our um, library at the moment. And one of the things I love about the curated quilts is um, the texture of the magazine. It's not the that thin, um, shiny magazine, it's the thick matte paper. So that's always fun too. I'm good now, Deborah. I've got it. All right, awesome. Sorry about that. Thanks for jumping in. <laughs> no, go away.
去。Thank you, Paula, once again, for having a great, putting together a great slideshow for us. Um, you guys are doing amazing work. I'm very impressed. So let's see if we can do, um, Paula, are you ready to do a screenshot? Should we try a screenshot? I wonder what happened to Paula. I see her mic is live. Might not be gonna get that done. Oh, I know, let's do our questions. Were there questions that came through? Deborah, have you been monitoring the questions on chat? Was there anything that came through? I think that I've answered everyone's questions either by text or by uh, chat box here. Okay. Um, and I, I can do a screenshot as well. Oh, please do, thank you. Let me just do a quick. Tell us yep. when you're ready and we'll all smile. Uh, let me just reset my, um, my settings. I did one there, but let me reset my setting <laughs> so that I have exactly what we need. If I have, have a different setting on there, close my chat. And I'm probably only gonna get half, it looks like. That's fine, it's just we wanna have just something up for the meeting on social media. Okay, I'm gonna take two pictures. And on your mark, get set, smile. We're gonna do it again for the second half of you. And you're not even sure uh, for which half you're gonna be in. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Paula, you're kind of dark there if you have a light to turn on. There, that's better. All right, second half, here we go. Smile. All right, I got them. Perfect, thank you. Um, it's if there, I think that's all we have for today. If anybody has anything else that they need to talk about, you can put your hand up or put it in the chat. Uh, Sue, yes. Hey, we had some questions about uh, quilt labels. So if you're doing a baby quilt and you'd like quilt labels, or if you're doing a, um, a charity quilt and you need labels, um, just let me know and I'll get them out to you, okay? Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that, Sue. Anything else? So I was thinking in um, uh, Ashley's presentation that Wabi Sabi should be the new motto of our Quilt Guild, embracing the imperfections of life. I think it, in general, and especially this year, that's what we're doing. So keep that with you as you go forward. Um, we have a couple so days coming up. I really hope I'll see you next Thursday night for the SJSA presentation. In the meantime, it's so wonderful to see you all. I can't wait till I see you in person again, but it's great to see you virtually. Stay safe, stay well, keep sewing. See ya.